It is Saturday, January 7th, 2023. I'm Chris Raymond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Sorry I didn't have the daily puzzle up yesterday. I actually did think I was going to be able to report it, but circumstances intervened, as they sometimes do, and so I had to publish another um, historic puzzle from that week in 2015, the Never Before series. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry that I wasn't here with the, the regular video, so I did wake up extra early today to try and find the time to record this. So hopefully the audio quality is all right. I'm in a, a hotel room at the moment, um, and we'll see how it goes. So this remote edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Bradley Pertle, Alex, Laura Saxon, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable showmaster, all of whom are, of course, benefactors of the Daily Soul Patreon campaign. And thank you so much to them for sustaining this series and uh, making it an ongoing part of my daily work. So I do appreciate that. And if you'd like to become a benefactor yourself, like those five, and get the Daily Soul Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field underneath the video where you can also become a patron at any level and get access to all of the bonus videos that I've put up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. I do know I'm behind on some of those, so I need to put in some once I'm back home and I actually have the time and I'm also now over that persistent cough, which means I can um, actually record videos without too much fear. So in any case, uh, look forward to those soon and thank you if you are a patron. All right, so do subscribe to the channel on YouTube as well and um, join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. That's a link in the description field as well. All right, so let's get on to the puzzle. This is the first Saturday puzzle of 2023. Uh, I suppose this is the last of the firsts of the new year. It was constructed by Adam Aronson, who's constructed around a dozen puzzles, I believe, for the New York Times, and was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It is a Saturday puzzle, so it will be themeless. And that's all we know. So let's start solving. Shoot. Okay, that could be anything. That could be shoot as in ask me a question, or it could be a sort of light out expressing frustration or dis dis disappointment. or I guess it could be shoot as in a pistol, but it seems less likely. Uh, it's turned down at a hotel, a heat or a bed. They the reason I don't think this is volume is because it's specific, turned down the volume is specifically because it says hotel and they have sort of turned down service where they turn down the bed, they sort of open the sheets. I don't exactly know what that entails other than, I assume it's more than just that bit. I think it's sort of some, they leave you a treat or something. I actually don't know. But it's a, it's a phrase I've seen. Bit of casino restaurant fare. Bit of casino restaurant fare. Hmm, not sure about that one. Ugh, this always happens to me. Something about bad luck or... Uh, Long-time A&W competitor. A&W is a brand of root beer. There's also a root beer, dad's root beer. I think this is probably the answer, but let's check the crosses. Language that Minecraft was written in. Oh, um, I mean, I didn't know this, but it must be Java, which is a common programming language in four letters ending with A. So there we go. He hosted the first Jeopardy in the post-Trebek era. Oh boy. I don't know this. Um, I don't know. Squeezed out could be eked out, as in sort of squeezed out a living, eked out a living. And does that help? Not really. Jerry, someone maybe? But uh, I just have no idea. Bit of casino restaurant fair. Baklava? Why would that be true? I don't think it is. Uh, bake, baked something? This is, this is a pun, we can tell, because of the um, question mark. So there's this. It, it probably won't be literally true that it's food associated with casinos, but it'll be food that sounds as though it might be, based on the name, in a funny sort of way. Oh, uh, this always happens to me. Every time? Every time. Uh, this always happens to me. That, that's, that's reasonable. I think that works. Bell, Bell of the synth-pop duo Erasure. Oh, I have no idea. I don't even think I recognize the, the band. Squat. So squat, again, this is what you get with Saturday puzzles frequently. You get these short clues that could be several things in the way that shoot could be several things. And um, squat could be uh, the physical activity, or it could be 
squat meaning nil, zilch is a slang term for zero. And so, yeah, I'm not sure. And it's crossing this proper noun, so I just I just have no clue. This sort of looks like baked, maybe, the casino restaurant fair. Major upsets, e.g., stunners. Is that that was a that was a stunner? That was a. You hear people say that about games that you know sports match. That was a a big upset. It was a total stunner. It's a U is unusual, so let's see if that helps. Oh yeah, it does. See through as in transparent, but spelled in this sort of commercial way that you might see in an advertisement. And founder of the label Rhyme Syndicate Records. Don't think I know that. Oh, look at that. We have another shoot. And it's exactly the same. It's in uh, quotation marks with an exclamation point, And it's crossing our other shoots. So that's very good. Rats, maybe? Just trying to think what would work in four letters with an S at the end. Shoot. Yeah. I don't know. It's too, it's too vague for me to, to want to put that in. Um, I just want to tr check this stunners more. Squat? Oh, no, I was going to say nil, but that's three letters, not four. None? Squat? None of something? Nil, none, not a squat. Zilch. Nada, did I say that? Nada, zero. Bell? Andy Bell? Is that someone? It sort of sounds familiar actually now that i say it and it oh that does work with baked he hosted the first jeopardy in the post era. Boy, i don't know yeah. oh i don't know i just don't know i'm hoping i'll just recognize a famous name even if i don't i mean jennifer would fit here but that doesn't make any sense because it says he Okay, diehard enthusiasts and then some. Wild, wild tasting. So it tastes of the wild. So a wild animal, so gamey as in it's a game meat. It's sort of an animal that's been hunted rather than, you know, like deer or a pheasant or something as opposed to a farmed animal, I suppose. I think that's probably what that means. It's gamey. Uh, ophthalmologists call it a hordeolum. Boy, I, a hor I did, definitely did not know this word, but it must be sty, which is an eye sort of condition. And so ophthalmologists are, are you know, eye doctors. So I think that's what this will be. J.M. Barry votes when. Oh, J.M. Barry wrote Peter Pan. So Smee is the the Boatswain, I didn't remember that Smee was the Boatswain specifically, but Smee is the pirate character from um, Peter Pan. Captain Hook's Boatswain, I suppose. And then Baked Clam? Bit of casino restaurant fare, Baked Clam. Is that, is that because clam, I mean, clams, I think, is a, is a slang term for dollar bills? That must be what that means. I'm not sure I'm getting the entire pun but I think that's what that's getting at. Oh, Jennings. Is, Ken Jennings is someone who's a successful Jeopardy contestant, I think. So that would, that would make sense. I think he's maybe the most successful Jeopardy player or some, something like that. Um, I've not actually watched Jeopardy in, a, in many, many, many years, so I'm not up on the exactly what this is, but I've, I've heard of this person, and that must be the answer. Diehard enthusiasts and then some addicts. I see you're not just an enthusiast, you're, you're addicted to the thing in question. People of Unalaska. Aleuts? I assume this is referring to an indigenous people here. Um, I, you know, I could, I could have it wrong, but I think this is probably the answer. Let's look here. Ecocentric college class informally. So some sort of green... Looks like Italian lit. Why would that be the case? Oh, it's not. It's not ecocentric. It's echocentric. It's referring to the 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 well the the novelist in this case novelist because it's referring to literature, but but also the semiotician and academic, the late Italian, late 
great Italian writer, Umberto Eco, who um, I, I've read actually all of his novels. He's one of my favorite novelists. He wrote The Name of the Rose, Foucault's Pendulum, um, Bautolino, The Island of the Day Before, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And he's just, he's absolutely great, but he's also, also was an extremely influential um, medievalist and, and semiotician and you know, wrote many academic works as well. Although I, I've primarily read his fiction. Anyway, very clever clue. That's very funny. Okay, Namibian neighbor. Um, um, it's not going to be Algeria, obviously. It could be Angola, maybe? Produced as digital currency. Oh, like um, Bitcoin and that sort of thing. Mind, you hear about about Bitcoin miners all the time these days. Well, maybe not as much as you did a couple of years ago, but that's definitely a thing people do is they sort of mine for digital currency. So start of some juicy gossip. Oh, did you hear? There we go. Oh, I bet that's right. Did you hear? So this is interesting. If this is Ali, it's, and it ends with UY. Oh, he's a mensch. There we go. So it'll, it'll be guy. And that does confirm this is Angola. So, so mensch. Um, uh, well, man in German, but but more relevantly, uh, sort of a good good, a good guy, a, a sort of stand up person in Yiddish. So he's a mensch. Um, what would what would require seven letters? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Let's just check the crosses. Oops. Policy at some bars and eating establishments. Um, not sure. And if not more, at minimum, so five, if not more, five at minimum, yeah, that works. And again, it's helpful to, to if you have a, an idea you think might be the case, but you're not sure it directly maps, read it aloud and replace, you know, re, re, swap out the clue, the, the, your answer and the clue and see if it still works because the, most clues will work that way. So anyway, what did I say? At, I know that doesn't work. I, I bet it does end with minimum though. If not more, five, if not more. It really seems like it would be at minimum. At a minimum? At a minimum, five at a minimum. No, yeah, that, that, that's, that's pretty weird. Let's check the crosses. Only chemical element, oh, this is interesting. Only chemical element whose name fits this answer is length. It must be tin. I guess it never, never occurred to me that tin is the only three letter element, but I can't think of any others, not that I'm an expert. Okay. Policy at some bars and eating establishments. No, no, um, I'm not sure. Cone head or oh, snow cone. That's a, it's a ice cream, packaged ice cream treat, I think. Snow cone. They're just above C, so this will be musical. So this will be D flats. So in music, the um, D flat, which would be equivalent to C sharp, would be one semitone above a C. Okay. Policy. Oh, no tips. Right. Okay. That could be a policy at some, that is a policy at some bars and restaurants who have a system where they pay their workers sufficiently and then they just, Eliminate tips for that reason. Okay, he's a mensch. Oh, stand up guy. Oh, that's funny. I, I think I even said stand up in, in my example of in my sort of explanation of what a mensch is, but it didn't occur to me to write it in. I can't do that occasionally. What might surround a trunk? Bark, trunk of a tree. Um, I think stand up is probably correct, but some you know, that something people trip on informally. Opium, snow. People trip on. I'm wondering if it's a drug. Um, having been informed in the know. Yeah, there we go. Yes. She said, having been informed, she said in the know that this was the answer. Drive, oops, drive off. Which, uh, Bill Clinton played one on the Arsenio Hall show in 1982. Oh, what is this? 
I thought it was saxophone. Oh, well, that doesn't fit. This was a sort of famous incident. I could have sworn it was a saxophone. Maybe it's not what he, maybe it's not the instrument that he played, but the piece or something, or the, the style of music or something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he played another instrument um, as well. I don't think so, though. Moisten in a way. Lick like a stamp. At some previous point. Hmm. Well, once. I solved a crossword at some previous point. I solved a crossword once. What might, does that help with this? What might surround a trunk? A nose? An elephant trunk or something? I don't, I just don't know what that is. Drive off, oh, scare away, right. I was thinking drive off as in you yourself are going to drive off. No, you're driving someone else off. You're scaring, scaring them away. I think that's the answer. Oh, shrooms, people trip on mushrooms, okay. So what might, oh, moss in a forest. Moss could surround a tree trunk. There we go. I was on the wrong track entirely with that one. Moisten in a way is to mist. So you could sort of spray a mist to moisten I don't know, vegetables or something. Oh, it's uh, right. It is a saxophone, but it's specifically a tenor sax. There we go. And then this looks like Eero again. Eero Arneo, entire interior designer who created the bubble chair. Oh, that's funny. Is it Eero? Um, I think so. We. That's so strange. We... <laughs> The second time this week we've had Eero in the crossword. What an unusual, or, you know, uncommon anyway, name. It's not as though it's in the crossword every day. Okay, so downfall is doom. And early flat screen. Oh, plasma TV. Maybe this isn't in the know. In the loop. In the loop. That's another way to be informed. Okay, so plasma TV is an early flat screen. And many uh, hosts informally, so the screen is much smaller on the laptop sometimes I can't quickly read it. Many posts informally. I'm not sure. I thought of a joke about blank, but it's too corny. Groaner, so the groaner meaning a sort of bad pun. It looks like Iowa, the state of Iowa, which is famous for um, how much corn it grows. And an ur to urge somebody is to coax somebody. I was thinking an urge, but no, it's a verb. And many posts, oh, I see, as an online post to say Instagram or something, are pics, pictures. And word on either side of versus spy versus spy, the comic strip. Okay, there we go. Let's go up here. Have we seen these yet? No. Half of a classic Hanna-Barbera cartoon duo. Oh, Tom, Tom and, was Tom and Jerry Hanna-Barbera? I didn't remember that. Yeah, I suppose saying that, I can't think of who else I thought it was. So I suppose it was Hanna-Barbera. Okay, human-shaped board game piece. Um, human-shaped board game piece. I don't know what that's referring to. Uh, refuse to settle, say you could sue somebody in court as opposed to settling out of court. Cap uh, capital in Lewis and Clark County. Oh, I don't know. I'm not even sure what state that is, to be honest with you. Things of use to note takers are, what are they? I don't know. Miami school, casually. Not sure about that either. John, who is a pioneer in set theory. Oh boy, I don't know any of these things. Let's keep looking. Code components. Um, could be code in the sort of cryptography sense, or could, could be code in the is in programming code, computer code. Uh, Cookie Monster's real name. Oh boy, I, have, I have no idea. It didn't really occur to me that Cookie Monster had a real name, but I suppose it makes sense. Oh boy, so we're going to need to solve some crosses here because I can't get any downs. A line, line. So you could have an A line dress with the you know the hem, the hem line of the dress. But does that help? Blank. Oh, I haven't looked at these downs. Blank Journey Literary Architect, The Hero's Journey, is formulated by or formalized by Joseph Campbell, famously. And Parisian preposition. 
Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'm sure I'll recognize it, but Guy Fox Knight accessories masks. So referring to the 5th of November, which is uh, in the UK, really primarily celebrated with fireworks. I don't really usually see too many people with masks, but uh, lots of fireworks. They start early in the day and they get, they continue on for a long time. Just wherever, I mean, just in neighborhoods. Okay, Capital and Lewis. Oh, Helena, Mon is that Montana? Um, that rings a bell, but let's check the crosses. Human-shaped board game piece. Oh, I, I actually have encountered this before. Meeple. That's a, that's a phrase that's used in a sort of modern board games, sort of German-style board games that have little, you know, usually little wooden, they don't generally look exactly like people, but they'll be sort of, you know, almost like chess pawn style or something like that. Um, I think that's what that is. Here to locals. Here, chores typically. A work, something work. Menial, menial work. There we go. That looks right. Code components. A laws, as in code of law, right? That was one I didn't think about. That was one I didn't think about. Okay. Oh, Parisian preposition. You could have entre. Um, is a French preposition. So the Parisian is just referring to the French language. That's all. Uh, so between in French is a preposition. Here to locals. Oh, these parts? Right. Okay. Yes. We're talking about here. We're talking about these parts. And is Cookie Monster's real name Sid? It's not knowledge that I had personally. Some, so I'm not going to put it in yet. Some sleeveless frocks. Oh, well, dresses probably. So I, I, I think Cookie Monster's real name probably is Sid. And then, oh, John Venn. Oh, right. That's interesting. So a Venn diagram, the overlapping circles where you see the, the bits that correspond to both circles are kind of subset, you know, the subset that's, that's the overlap. So Venn diagram, named after John Venn. Don't think I knew John Venn. Miami school casually, oh, it could be the something, but I, I don't know what the something is. Oh, things of use to note takers are ATMs, because notes in this case refers not to, I should have take, paid more attention to the question mark, uh, refers not to taking notes on paper, but rather withdrawing banknotes from an automated teller machine. And then some sleeveless frocks are sundresses. There we go. Okay. Yikes. And 1950, 19, sorry, 1996 horror classic, originally titled Scary Movie. Originally titled? What does that mean? There was a film called Scary Movie that was a sort of comedy parody of a number of horror films of the time, and that was called Scary Movie. There's no way that was 1996. It must have, must have come later because it parodied things like Scream and, and so on, and those, those were in the late. Scream was at least 19. Oh, maybe this is Scream. So originally titled, I guess that means during production. I don't think that film was ever, no, I never certainly knew it by that name. Maybe that was its working title. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Kids game cry, I lose or I lost. I don't know about that. Unit of measure that has a shared etymology with inch. No. The pinch? Unit of measurement? That seems a little bit weird. I don't think that's not really unit of measurement. It's too vague. Striking. Something striking. It's really noticeable. What is it? Word at the center of Rhode Island's flag. I don't know. Go green, perhaps. <laughs> so this is green. Well, actually, it's got a question mark. So it could be green as in sort of ecocentric, but it could, it could be something else. I'm not sure. Shoot is, oh, right, this is that again. Founder of the, right, okay. Mm. Need to find a new way into this. Living under a, oh, out of touch. Living under a rock is out of touch. There we go, good. I don't think I ever looked at that clue. I know, it's, wait, what did I do? All right. Okay. Living under a rock metaphorically used to refer to, refer to people who just don't know what's going on in the modern world, which is sometimes how I feel. 
how hors d'oeuvres are served on a platter. There we go. And founder of the label Rhyme Syndicate. Oh, it must be iced tea. Okay. There we go. Founder of the label Rhyme Syndicate Records. I, I figured it was probably going to be a rapper based on the name. There we go. Cute. Oh, nuts. Okay. So there, there's a light both. Oh, and this looks like it's going to be Darnit or something. So go green, perhaps. Right. If this were Darnit, this could be rot. So food that is going green could be could be rotting, potentially. And shoot could be gosh darn it, maybe. That would match pretty closely, I think, to shoot. Word at the center of Rhode Island's flag. That would make this hope, which is plausible. And striking of Stark. It's Yes, I see. They, it's a, it was a striking argument of Stark. Stark picture was painted. Yikes could be eek. And kids game cry. Goose. Oh, goose is in duck, duck, goose. You walk around the circle and tag people. So duck, 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 goose. Okay, and then shoot is gosh. And, oh, the unit of measurement with the shared and the molecule with inch is ounce. I didn't know that, but that makes sense based on the words. So is that the puzzle? There it is. All right. And sorry, I don't think that I don't think the music played for you, unfortunately. But that was the crossword for Saturday, January seventh, twenty twenty three. I think that was a pretty tricky Saturday puzzle, to be honest with you. Let me know how you fared with that one. I thought it was tough. Um, I don't know that there's any one thing that was extraordinarily difficult. It was just tough throughout. This Italian lit was, I can imagine this being extremely difficult if you aren't familiar with, with Umberto Eco, um, just because it's the clue is so misdirected. I mean, it's just so incredibly, it, it's very clever. It's, an, it's incredibly clever, but I, I just so happens that I've read quite a lot of Umberto Eco and, and, and really enjoy his writing. So, uh, you know, that was, the crosswords are so, they're so dependent on that kind of arbitrary knowledge uh, or associations, whereas it took me much longer to jump to Jennings than I suspect a lot of people would have gotten that almost immediately. Or taken even longer than I did. If you have no U.S. cultural context at all, uh, that might be an even less obvious clue than it was for me. So, you know, the, actually that, that clue is a great example of how, this, how much of a range there can be here. Um, but yeah, they're just a tough, a tough puzzle, tough Saturday puzzle. I mean, it lived up to its reputation, I think, as the difficult day. But let me know how you, how you fared. I am always interested to know. And with that, I will wrap up this video. I do think I'll, I, I may or may not be back for tomorrow's video. I, I have some time, but it is the Sunday puzzle, which means it's the longest puzzle to solve typically. So it's going to be the, 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 the toughest one to fit into my schedule, but, but I'll do my best. In any case, there will be something on the channel tomorrow, so look out for that. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.